Hey everybody, this is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong, and I wanted to share with everyone a journal that I just finished and that is going into the shop today. I'm in love with this journal. <laughs> I want to keep it, but I can't keep all the journals that I make. This one has a touch of steampunk vibe to it. Um, you can see the charms, and I'll explain the little faux crystals once I get into the journal, but it's got a few little gears on one of the cords, and I like the little heart charm. I'll explain that more as well. And there's a lot of purple in this journal. You can see there's also some gold ribbon. This is one of my favorite ribbons ever. I don't have much left in my stash, but I decided to include some of it in this journal. I don't think it's super, super old. It, it may have some age to it. It's just got this look that makes it look really old, and I love that. So you can keep it tied like I had it, or you can untie it and just let it hang down. You could even put charms on that. I've done that before with this exact ribbon. So getting into this journal, there is a metal tag sewn onto the front that says encourage your hopes, not your fears. I love that. And we have two kinds of purple ribbon or fabric as a closure. We had this layer first. I love this iridescent look. And then over the top, <clears throat> there's another ribbon that doesn't come all the way out. It stops at the edge. Love the cover, the textiles. There um, are quite a few textile elements in this journal as well. But that's a really nice um, upholstery type fabric that the journal is covered in with then a, another little embellishment on the front. And you will understand all of this when I get into the journal. So starting inside, I wanted to have something really delicate in the front that would allow this map to show through. On the inside front and back, there are little map pieces glued underneath. And on top, this is a vintage little lace. I guess it's a type of uh, doily or little, um, like a tabletop. Uh, I can't even think, not a tablecloth, but you know, just something that you would put on a tabletop to sit things on. It's very old. I, I love that it had kind of a lavender um, tint to it. It's a very, very faint, but it, the ribbon really picks it up. So on the first page, and let's see, there are 32 pages. I mean, and that is not counting front and back. Or was it 36? Anyway, I, I will have that in the description. It might be 36. Yeah, okay, I will figure that out. So on the very first page, I've got the word steam here because I wanted this journal to capture maybe what the lifestyle was of this beautiful girl. And this is one of my favorite, favorite photos that I have in my collection. It is going into this journal. It's going to a new home. I wanna make sure that you can really see how beautiful she is. The curls, the hair embellishments she's got, that's just gorgeous. It looks like a butterfly on one end and like a little arrow or heart on the other end and it looks like it's going through a ring of some kind. It's just absolutely beautiful. This photograph is probably from 1860s, 1870. So I am going to part with her for the sake of this journal, and this is her story. There's a little pocket on the front. This is a printout from my digital collection. 
an embroidered little table runner and of course again the word steam I, the industrial revolution of course the steam engine came along and <clears throat> engines that changed everything for people and it was an exciting time from really about 1880 to the first part of the 1900s is what I'm thinking about with her. So let's move on. On the inside, oh, and there are quite a few of these little Tim Holtz uh, file clips throughout. I like that they look really old. They have that aged look and they hold things in nicely. So this is another tag that I printed from my digital collection, Property Of. You can put your name there. I love this. So this is um, coffee dyed and you can just see the little butterfly behind it and then when you turn the page you see the beautiful bird. This is from some wallpaper from my collection and I have not named her. You can do that whoever ends up with this journal but it is her, her Birds and butterflies, creatures, nature, travel. She loves all of that. She's sort of bohemian. She loves to travel. She loves to collect things. And I just wanted this journal to reflect that, plus a little bit of that time frame. This is a page from a magazine I had from about 1895. Um, just an old ad that would represent what medicine might have been like during her time time frame and just I love the design I love the the different colors in this there's some really rich colors this is more muted but it picks up the deep green and the deeper purple that it, you'll see later on so there's another strip of the wallpaper I have tried to leave places throughout where you can write um, or glue things in to make this journal your own. I love the butterfly stamp, the moth. That's actually a moth. Again, she loves nature. Now, here is another beautiful old photograph that I love, and I am sending with the journal. This map is not particularly old, but it's coffee dyed, and I just liked that it had the creatures. In my mind, these are two young children that she has been given charge of to educate and to take care of for their parents and she is trying to expose them to everything she learned during her travels and here is a beautiful stamp showing uh, a ship out on the sea and she has traveled by sea she's been to quite a few different places so they are getting to be the recipients of some of the things that she's learned she's sharing her stories with them. I love this page. This is from a vintage piece of cloth that I had. Again, she loves the birds and I just love the blue and of course this was a deep blue page that I put in. It's probably the only blue page in here but it's got the deep deep primary color that I thought would be nice with the other colors. So there's that. And of course, here's the other part of the map. And I did put a little bit of washi tape in to cover up a couple of places where dates were showing. Um, here's a butterfly from her collection, little delicate butterfly wings that she saved. And the washi tape here, it says, to draw you must close your eyes and sing. And that's Pablo Picasso. We're gonna just say that this quotation, it could fit in, right? <laughs> and then beside that, adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. And that is Ralph Waldo Emerson. I love that washi tape. Um, it's got a lot of nice quotes on it. I think there may be another one in here somewhere from that. So another, this is one of the first full pages that is available to be written on or to have things glued on. And we get to a little tuck spot and a journal card that you can write on. Another stamp underneath there. I want, well, I'll take that off just to show you. And did leave a little mark, but kind of adds to the aged feel of this book. I'm not worried about that. 
I just use care when sliding that on. And then, of course, you can see the beautiful butterflies underneath. Let's just go ahead and take both of these off. And show you the butterflies. That's the gray hair streak. Very pretty on the white flowers. Put these back on. Back in. They slide right on, and I love that old look. Fits right in. It's really nice. Yeah, make sure that's going in right. So there's that. And then, of course, I love this part of the wallpaper. There is the other part of that little piece. Um, from way back here. I love the insect. That again has that sort of steampunk vibe, kind of a, it's a nature thing, but it also feels a little goth. Um, that looks like it would sting, of course, maybe a wasp of some kind. Uh, apartments for rent. I love that that's down there at the bottom. Looks like maybe this came from some, some old ads. There's another card with the Tim Holtz file clip. And then we get to the second signature. Again, there's a lot of purple. You could write on this. You could glue things on. And here's one of the other pieces of that washi. Typography. The art or process of setting and arranging types and printing from them. I like that a lot. That would certainly fit in with that time frame. And then there's, of course, a deep, beautiful sort of... It's not really green. Uh, what is this called? And that's not teal, is it? What is that? I'm not very good with naming all those colors. Uh, more of the coffee dyed paper. It says automobiles here. And then this page, there's a little pocket here. Um, and I believe this little part here is actually still in the process of drying. So that may not, and it's fabric glue, so I don't think it's gonna be darker there when it dries. But this is a piece of lavender lace from my stash. And of course, there's a little pocket where you can tuck something. That card might be a little big, but <clears throat> who knows? Maybe we'll just leave that in there. And then on to this page. A um, little strip of the map that was in the front and the back. More places for you to write. And I love this paper. This is another piece of paper that I had in my stash, and it's just just scrapbook paper. But I love that it shows the constellations. Again, I feel like that ties in with that time frame. They did not have iPhones and television and computers, so nature, the sky, books, arts, that was their entertainment. And then we open up to this beautiful page. Take this clip off. And that's where I used some ink spray to um, color this side of the page. And I used some heart-shaped doilies to give it that, that um, interest. And this is just a piece of uh, paper that I love. It almost feels like the handmade paper. You can see the little fibers in it. And I love, again, tying in with this, that it has the stars. It's just really pretty. <clears throat> it's one of my favorites. Slide this back on. <clears throat> There's the back of that. More paper for you to write on. And another pretty stamp. This one says Francais. Francais, I suppose. And it's just really pretty, again thinking about her travels. More blank paper for writing. The same here, and that's coffee dye. And then the back, love that. More insects. And then here is a little print out from my digital collection. She's just so sweet. Um, and I'm saying she, I'm thinking that's a little girl, but sometimes the way they dressed the boys and let their hair grow, I, one never knows, but I believe that's a little girl. So sweet. And it looks like she's holding, uh, are those forget-me-nots? I think they are. 
And of course, for the children, she cares for, she's got some paper dolls on hand. That is a printout from an old magazine I have from about 1900. And then I love this page as well. Um, there's some very uh, fibery, that's not a word, some trim down in here that is from her collection of travels and textiles. And of course, more of the purple ribbon. I just love that. So you can see the horse and the horses and the carriage. And that would have been her transportation. And here, once again, this is a very early version of Peter Rabbit. I don't think it goes quite back to when the book was first written around 19, what was it, 1902 or something. But this probably is more in line with the actual first time it was published. But we've got an illustration from a very old version of the book and a little card of the text. And of course, she would be reading to the little children that she cares for. More blank paper. I tried to really make it so this journal would lay flat. Um, of course, by this time, we're getting towards the end of the book. And gold paper. I'm guessing you can write on that. I am not really, I've never written on this gold paper before. Of course, if you write on it and don't like it, the wonderful thing about journals is that you can always cover it up with something else that you love. This, I love this, very heavy piece of paper cut from a large painting that looks like it was started by a young artist or a uh, maybe not young, maybe older who was just starting anyway. Uh, and the reason I am assuming they were young or just starting, even though it's excellent, I think it's beautiful. Um, I came across while I was out thrifting and hunting for vintage treasures, a stack of paintings like this. And they were all big, like 16 by 20 inches. And they look, they looked like they had just been abandoned, kind of mid so that's what made me think maybe it was an art student or someone who had started and then stopped. But I love this castle look. And, of course, that could be a place that she visited or maybe a place where she has relatives in Europe. And this is more wallpaper from my stash. The back of this is just white. And there's another beautiful stamp with the ship. This is neat. That stamp says Concord, 1683, German Immigration Tricentennial. So I guess that stamp was actually from uh, 1983. So that's, that's good to know. Here is a little pocket if you want to stick something in there. A bookmark, maybe, or just, you know, what have you. It's not a super uh, wide pocket, but pocket nonetheless. There's another pocket with a little journaling card for you. I love that the purple goes all the way through. And then I love this page. She's got a cat. I couldn't help but put this in. I love these colors in the background. I can just imagine some of the lavish fabrics that she might have from her travels and She's fortunate enough to be able to travel and have a little money to be able to buy some things and bring them home. So I just thought I can just see her cat sitting on a, a very old sofa or couch with all these fabrics around it. And love this page. This is from a children's encyclopedia and it shows um, animals in a zoo the back talks a little bit about care of animals and of course she would have been sharing that with the children she cares for and I just love this this was coffee dyed so and it this this will come out it's just sitting underneath the string there and that is from a page of vintage transportation illustrations so we've got the chariot streetcar in fact, why don't we let that be what shows? I think that's really my favorite side. So, and that 
doesn't really even have to be clipped in. Um, I'll slide it back under there a tiny bit, but I don't want to tear it. So yeah, there's that. Fold that over. I just love that page. And then we have a pocket here in which she has more of her little delicate um, butterfly wings that she has collected. There's a little dragonfly in there for good measure. These are so pretty and bright. Don't think there. Oh, there is one more. And it's one of those little. I bet my hair is in front of the camera. Sorry, guys. Is that what's called a sulfur butterfly? The wait. I'm not sure. There's a cloudless sulfur or something. I don't remember. I used to know, but I love that. That's just so pretty. I always used to be so sad when I would find butterfly wings in my garden, just thinking about butterflies. They don't live very long. They go through a lot to get here, and then they're not here for very long. On the back of this envelope, I have um, pasted on a beautiful flower from my wallpaper collection. It's a pretty, pretty English garden rose. And then over here, we have another beautiful ship. Love that. That is in a foreign language. I cannot read that, so. And then here we are with more wallpaper. And the other part of that building, you can see the little bird on top. I think it's adorable. It's, I have some other pieces cut from this same painting and I will either be putting those in packets or use them in another journal. This, I just love to think that maybe she had the opportunity to go to India with maybe one of her relatives from uh, from England. And maybe she had an uncle who was um, in the military in, in England, and of course they did go to India. And so there she's got her her fabric with a, with a monkey on it. And of course that's a little tuck spot there with the clips and washi tape. I like that design. And I love this page. This is a stamp, but she's so beautiful. This could easily be her. And of course, we're at the end of the book. More of this beautiful gold paper. Um, some very pretty different purple shades of flower petals and little samples of the fabric that she loves. Another stamp. Um, I can't read that. I need my magnifying glass because I can't read very well anymore. Turks and Caicos Islands. Half penny. This says 1848 to 1948. So of course some of the pieces in here are not, not all old, of course, not the paper, but there are a lot of true vintage elements in here. And then on the very last page, we have this little pocket, of course, from a library book. And in here, I have a card from a book that is about the nature of crystals. And that is another thing she became interested in in her travels. She loves crystals, which explains, of course, some of the charms. She's got a couple of crystals here. Her heart, which she kind of wears on her sleeve, is represented here. And then these gears and little pieces of um, hardware represent the age in which she lives. Things are just becoming industrialized and it gives people more opportunities for work and for easier living. So that is it. And of course the creed she lives by, encourage your hopes, not your fears. So that's that. I will definitely count pages and have that in the description. Sorry, my work desk is so messy with strings and stains, but this is where I work, so it's okay. And that's it. Isn't she lovely? I really appreciate Everybody stopping in and looking at this. I love this. <laughs> so it's going to be hard to let go of it. But on the other hand, it's going to be easy to let go of it. Because I know whoever buys this is going to love it like I do. 
So I will see you next time. And thank you so much for stopping in. Bye.